Hi everyone, my name is Remo Orr. I work at Experta.com. I'm a database administrator and for the last 19 years my speciality has been improving performance of SQL Server databases. Today's subject is covering indexes. Any index that we have in SQL Server has the keys and included columns. The included columns are actually columns that are not sorted or organized and the keys, the keys are columns that are already organized. For example, any clustered index, supposedly if I have table 1 with ID and then A, B and C as columns, any clustered index that we have on ID is actually ID plus A, B and C. And when I say plus, it means everything to the right is the included. So ID becomes the sorted, anything that we want for the range, for the equality, for the where, or for the group by, or order by, or joins. And all of these are included, or all the columns are included in the index itself. And why do we need that? Well, the basic principle of working with an index is that the SELECT statement was A, B, and C from table 1, the same table 1 we just had, where ID equals 5. So, this is an index on ID. The client will go down to the index. In the index itself, we will find the value of 5, and with that, we will go down to the table, selecting the row ideas, and bring the result back to the client. So that means client to the index, index will collect row ideas, with those row ideas go to the pages of the table, and with that, we'll get it back to the client. Now, this whole thing means that we're going on a different disk for this, or a different sector, sector of the disk for this. What we want is a very, very short in and out of the index. Now, this depends on many, many different variables, of course. One of the variables, it means, is it worth it to add all of these columns to the index itself? And of course, from anywhere else, because we can have a group by, we can have a having, we can have an order by, all the queries that are using select all, it's not worth it. Sometimes SQL Server, especially in the profiler, when you will analyze the execution plan, sometimes it will recommend uh, having the whole index added with the different uh, included columns as well. It's not worth it. However, if we have a simple query such as this, and our table is very, very, very big, for example, table 1 and we have ID A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I and a lot, of, a lot of tables have a lot of columns as well and we have this little thing select A, C, B from table where ID equals 5 maybe instead of just having an index on the ID column we will have an index on ID, A, and B. Now this index holds just a fraction of the information that is in table 1. And of course here all we have to do is go to the index and go back. We won't have to go down from the index using the row ideas collected from the index to the table and coming back. And again in the I.O. level this saves a lot. Now this is a very very short and simple example of course. We can take it to the next level and understand that we can't always use covering indexes. We have to understand as the database administrator which queries are more important, which queries are less important. If for example at 8 o'clock in the morning everybody's coming to the office, opening their machines and then they're loading a lot of information for the system for the first time to be used during their uh, work day, then we know that these queries might be more important because at 8 o'clock in the morning when 500 of our fellow employees are coming into the organization uh, we need the queries to run much faster or the loading of the system is much faster. 
However, if we have an annual report or a monthly report that we know that is running using a batch in the system uh, in the weekend time, and we know that it's not really important for it to be fast, then we not, won't need to use the covering indexes. And again, any covering index that we use is storing a lot of information, duplicate information that we already have. And what is going to be hurt, but the performance that's going to be affected by that is the insert statements, the update statements, and the delete statements. Because instead of just doing all these three uh, statements for the table, now we're doing them for the indexes. Now the good news is, uh, from the different research that we've done here in Expera.com, is that it doesn't really matter how many of the columns you put, as long as the columns themselves are not in varchar or very, very wide. And all this I'm going to touch in a different video about how we choose the different columns, or the, different, or the order of the columns, uh, and uh, how wide we want the index to be. So for example, if it's really integers, big ints, dates, all of these 4 bytes, uh, 8 bytes, or less, it doesn't matter how many of the columns we put, it doesn't affect it as much as actually having an nvar car or a very, very wide and long string uh, column. If the index already exists, just add the different included columns to it. Meaning if the index is already on ID and A, and you see that you have this query, and still this will go down to the table. All you have to do is add the B. You can add it as a key and it will be sorted, or you can add it as included and it won't be sorted. And then you'll know that you're using it only for the select statement itself. Let's see an example. So, this is an example of covering indexes. Um, I'm using Northwind, the standard database for SQL Server that we usually use in different lectures. And I wanted you guys to check out this query. It uses the table orders, uh, which is right here on the left, and order details. Uh, the, the columns that we're going to use is the order idea, which is the master detail uh, or the foreign key between order details and orders. And in orders, we're going to see that we're going to use unit price and quantity. And we're actually going to calculate the revenue for a particular ship uh, from table orders. So it should select ship name and then the sum of the unit price and quantity of the different products from orders, inner join order details on order ID, where shipment country is Germany. And the cycle is the fourth cycle of the year. And again, we are grouping by the ship name. So you can see the results down here. Uh, we have the actual total uh, revenue for each one of the ships. Uh, before I've explained that we're going to use the DBCC drop clean buffers, because every time we're going to test, because we're you know, testing performance improvements, every time we want to test, we want to check it out without the cache. Uh, you will probably do this most of the time in your QA environment or in your development environment. And additional two statements that we're going to use is set statistics IO on and set statistics time on. When we use that, uh, when we run the query, and next to the results tab, we have the messages tab. And here we can actually see the different tables that were affected and how much logical reads they had on them. And under here, then we have the elapsed time as well, the total elapsed time as well, which over here we can see that it's almost a fifth of a second. So this is, again, just for the example. Some of you are going to have queries that are taking 10 minutes, and you're going to improve them to two seconds, and you're going to be like, wow, that's kind of amazing. So let's see. First, the execution plan. We can see here that we have a full table scan on order details because I've cleaned up all the indexes on it. And we have a clustered index seek, uh, which is just on the order idea because of the join that we have here. You will see. By the way, if we look at the missing index details that SQL Server is recommending, is that it's a covering index. What do I mean when I say it's a covering index? It's on order details. And we have the cycle, which is the filter in the keys. And after that, we have the order ID, the unit price, and the quantity. You see, by default, SQL Server will recommend this index. We're going to use it just for the examples. We're going to create three indexes. The first is going to be the full index. The second is just with the keys. So I'm going to have only on cycle. 
I'm going to create this index, clean buffer cache, and I just want to see if it's going to use index number two. And you can see right here on the right that even if we don't have the full index, still SQL Server says that this index is good for me. I'm going to use it uh, because it filters out. Now we're going to create the first covering index and clean the buffer cache and see what happens here. First, we can see that it ran much faster, 64 milliseconds. If you remember the amount of logical reads, you will also see that the amount of logical reads has been reduced on table order details. Now it's only 12. And when we look at the execution plan, then we can see that we're only using order details IX1, meaning this index. For those of you with a good eye, you'll probably notice that not only that we're using that index, but we're not going to the actual table. Let's check out again what happens when we drop this index and we issue the command. In the execution plan, we can see that we are going to the first index that only is only on the key. And with that, we're having an order details lookup, meaning we're going to the table with the raw ideas we collected from the first index. We're moving to the table, and only then we're entering the nested loops with the orders table. What we saw when we created the covering index is that we didn't have to go to the table, meaning right now the covering index, we're only going to the index itself. And in this scenario, I would keep the covering index and I would drop the second index that's simply not necessary and we don't want it to just become a redundant index uh, hurting our performance in the inserts, updates, and deletes. Now, we're not done. Let's take a look at table orders. So again, right now, the logical reads in table orders with the new covering index for order details is logical read 6,608, and our elapsed time is 62 milliseconds. That's for, just for the example, we'll drop this index, and we'll clean the buffers, and we'll see before all the improvement, how much logical read we had and how much time. So the elapsed time, total time of the query was 342 milliseconds. Table orders had logical reads of 6,780 and table order details at 9,339. So we'll add the missing index order details and let's see there's no added recommendations for the orders table but we're going to add our own index anyway let's see in orders we have the ship country which is germany we have the order id and we have the ship name we can see them down here the order ID in table orders, the ship name, and the ship country. And we can see that there's a filtering being done on, on Germany. So let's create an index. By default, it's a non-clustered index called orders covering on table orders. And we'll add first the ship country, then the ship name, no, then the order ID, and then the ship name. I'll probably have a video coming out with uh, the right order for the columns. This is a quite a complicated, uh, a complicated uh, video that is going to come out. So, what we actually did is create a covering index. Now let's see. We'll drop the buffers and we'll rerun the query. And look at that. Now orders is actually using orders covering index. 
and let's see our total performance improvement. So after improvement, we have an elapsed time of 87 milliseconds. Order table has a logical count larger. And order details have a logical count of 12 instead of 9,000. Now, the reason for this is because before that, we used the primary key. The primary key in SQL Server, in this case, is a clustered index, meaning that you already have to go into the table anyway. So when we scan the, the primary key, we had to scan the clustered index itself, which in this case is called orders primary key. So you see, we had to go through the primary key. If we didn't have this primary key, the improvement would, would have been much vast. And another thing you need to understand about logical reads is that it's not physical reads, meaning if we have a nested loops and we needed a particular page, and we're going to use that page for a thousand different times, every time we're going to have a read in the logical reads. So even if we had one physical read in a nested loops, it will read like a logical read. So don't always believe these numbers. And this is a great example. So this kind of covers covering indexes for you.